Hi everyone. So in this video I want to cover uh, a bit how the course will work. Essentially what are the key points that we're going to cover in this course. Um, what we're not going to cover as well is important. So we're, we're not going to cover algorithms or intro to programming and computing or how to learn a specific programming language. So in this course is really about uh, learning how to implement, as we'll see in the next slide, like how to implement programming languages, and that's the main focus, or, or actually not just programming language, but by, but we focus on programming language features. Uh, that's really the, the crux of what we're kind of teaching here. Um, so this is not a course on algorithms that you must have learned before. Um, you're not, this is a 400 level course, so it's not an introductory uh, course on programming. So I assume you already know how to program. I assume you know how to write recursive code. Although you don't need, you're not expected to be like a wizard on writing recursive code, you at least need to know how to write it because it's it's the main part of this course. Um, and it's not really, again, a course on learning uh, to program in Racket, which is the language we're going to cover. Um, it's more on learning how to implement features. The programming language actually does not matter. Um, you will see why we kind of want to learn Racket. Basically, actually, I can, I can spoiler alert, tell you right, right now why. Uh, the reason is basically because we are going to learn how to programming in Racket by implementing uh, a, a small language called Racket. <laughs> so, so we're basically using Racket while we are learning, we're implementing, because this really is a course to learn by doing. So what we're going to learn, main focus is, how do we design programming language features? So for that, we need to learn what uh, programming language features exist, um, and then how we implement them. Uh, and we are going to cover functional and object-oriented programming we are going to use to convey our ideas um, semi-formal specifications. So we're going to have a mathematical way to describe uh, the algorithms that we are going to discuss. And by algorithms, I don't mean like the classical data structures algorithms course. I mean uh, the code that we're going to implement to uh, write a mini racket language. Uh, this course is also on programming patterns, as you will see. Uh, these are not programming patterns specific to functional programming, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, there, they can be and are used in many ways in, in many programming language models. Um, we are going to cover on purely, and purely here is important, functional programming. Uh, functional programming, is, by that I just mean code that uh, the programming languages that center around the use of functions and combining functions to to uh, write programs. And here purely is important. It just means that it's side effect free. Uh, as you will see in our course, you won't be able to use uh, mutation. So today we're going to learn essentially the hello world of, of the programming language racket. Uh, and we're going to learn the syntax is going to be very uh, the syntax basically how do you write racket and how do you um, given a racket expression how do you execute it so how do you write it is the syntax and how do you run it is the semantics is known as semantics so the meaning of a program is how do you run that program um, and we're going to use examples to to guide our our, our learning and we are going to have always um, a way to describe, a formal way to describe syntax, and basically it's, we're going to be using grammars, which is uh, something you might have learned in, in compilers and in theory of computation. Um, and then for semantics, you will see we have a, a specific way of defining how to um, specify the evaluation algorithm. So evaluation is how do you execute a certain bracket expression. Okay, so to summarize, um, when we talk about syntax, we actually mean just the abstract syntax. So what we really care about is 
not really the specifics of whether you you start with the parentheses or whatever, uh, and and what are the valid characters that you can use in a variable name is really that a variable name is just a name. You want to know more like the structure. Like if you have a function call, the first thing is going to be the function, and then the are uh, the arguments. So really about the the structure of the things that we are describing. So the syntax, the abstract here means that we don't really care how you write it, but what are the different categories that we use, categories. So semantics is really about, as I was saying, how do you execute something? And you, the keyword here is evaluation, which you will hear often in this course. Um, and then there's these three rules that we use in this course, um, and they're guided by good programming practices. Um, especially for functional programming. So the first one is we will not use uh, the print, printf, prints, whatever you, however you want to call it, println, uh, put s. So this function that shows in racket is actually called display or print. <laughs> so you won't be able to use that, or at least in the first couple of homework assignments, probably the first and second, you, you can use it. Uh, but after that, you will actually have points deducted if you use it. But really, the the main point that I want to make is that we want to use um, assertions. So wherever you would like to put a print, maybe just put a wait uh, a check that uh, confirms your hypothesis, right? So let's say you wanted to see if x is some number that is greater than five. Just put that check over there, and if it fails, it will crash and you get. But if it doesn't fail, you always get, uh, you don't get your output cluttered by, uh, you know, meaningless data. So you don't want to be overwhelmed by that and all that. So, but th that's going to be like a main focus. It's, it's really like test driven development, all that. If you haven't heard of it, you will, you'll get used, uh, you will be using it because it's really, when you submit a homework assignment, you'll have a battery of tests and then, while the week goes and while the, the weeks are going in to, to write the homework assignment, we will have uh, discussions where we create more tests uh, to to make uh, sure that, you know, your implementation is good enough. Um, and there will be a lot of discussion centered around tests. So when I mean assertions, I mean tests. Uh, then the second thing that's very important in this course is no mutation. And it's really as an exercise for you guys to think how do I write code that is not mutable, um, that is that is not changing behind my backs, uh, behind my back? Um, there's this focus on persistent data structures. We'll, we'll cover a bit more what that means um, and why mutation is is not advised, at least as a as a first resort. It's something that should be used with caution, uh, especially when you you want to think about correction of algorithms and so on. And finally, a third point that is only useful if you're doing functional programming is not to use loops. Uh, and we're going to see why it's really on writing recursive code, which is crucial in functional programming. And really in Racket, there's no really good way of using loops unless you are uh, using mutation. So those are the three rules, and they will be enforced in the in the homework assignment software or grading software. So yeah, in the next video, we're going to cover our first, first racket program. Hope you have fun.